I ain't folding under pressure, I ain't switching for no hoe. I ain't talking to no cop and I ain't telling all my bros. Ain't no killer, but don't push me fingers itching on that pole. Niggas. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy K Flexin. Oh, I keep saying your boy. It's a fucking habit. Goodness gracious. It's K Flexin. I'm back here with another video. And if this video is gonna be the draft grades, okay? Uh, of, uh, I had some time to think about and analyze exactly like what what do I think about the Dolphins draft okay I read all you guys comments or what you guys think about some of the picks okay some of you guys are just incredibly optimistic which is wonderful it's great to be optimistic but some of you guys are just unrealistic okay we didn't draft six Pro Bowls Bruh. you guys y'all think seven Pro Bowls like obviously everybody can't be amazing I'm sorry to tell y'all no ever nobody's ever done it okay it's the reason that people were six round draft picks okay but vice versa some of you guys are just hella negative everybody that we drafted can't be trash well they could be technically I guess we have probably had a draft where everybody was trash but there's a chance that some some of these guys are at least good, okay? So some of you guys are really way too up right here. Like, like listen, and, that, and it's just not just Dolphins fans, it's every, every team's fan. Everybody thinks that everybody drafted uh, all pro bowlers. So everybody, it, it's just not gonna happen like that, guys. It can't happen. So we're gonna get to the video. Uh, with the first pick, which was Mika Fitzpatrick. Mika Fitzpatrick, obviously, I like this pick. I like this pick because Ray Lewis loves loves Mika Fitzpatrick, and I love Ray Lewis. All right, that's basically what it is. All right, now. Obviously, I wanted Roquan Smith, but this guy has a lot of the things that I liked about Roquan Smith, which is, I, I think, the ability to change the defense with his leadership. Uh, it set a good example. It changed the culture. That's the things I thought about Roquan Smith, but obviously, Roquan Smith got taken by the Chicago Bears. I, I, I used to like the Bears, but I started to hate them more. Anyways, can't dwell, you can't cry over spilled milk, okay? We got Mika Fitzpatrick, and I honestly didn't even know Mika Fitzpatrick was as good as he as I now know he is. I didn't know he was this much of a leader, this much of a culture changer, because I never thought he would slip to the Miami Dolphins. But thank you, there was so many, um, what I, I don't want to say desperate, I should say thirsty teams that really wanted a quarterback, so they let a top five talent slip all the way to 11. So thank you, thirsty quarterback wanting teams, okay? So I'm, I'm happy with Mika Fitzpatrick. I, that was for sure the best pick on the board at that time, okay? Okay, it's, I mean, it's no way. Mika Fitzpatrick was 100% the best player on the board at that time, and it was a place that we need of. Now, round two, we got Mike Gasicki. I've heard people call him Mike Gasicki, so I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name, really. But what I will say is this. He's tall. He's athletic. That's why I like him. By the way, in one of my videos when I was talking about Mike Gasicki, the first video I was talking about him, and I remember I said, you know, uh, I've been wanting Dolphins to get an athletic tight end for so long. I was like, we never had an athletic 6'6 tight end. We always had, like, kind of short tight ends like Charles Clay and shit like that. Somebody commented on that mother and was like, you are not a real Dolphin. In, in, in 1980-something, we got uh, somebody named Edmonds who was a tight end as well. Like, nigga, What? Like, obviously, I was talking about in my lifetime, which, which I've seen since I was like, people forget that I'm 21 sometimes. Like, I, bro, I'm not bringing up 1963. I don't give a f the, the real season that I give a f about in history are 72 and 73 because those are the Super Bowl seasons. But other than that, y'all like, I give a f who we drafted in 1983 because I don't, okay? Unless it was Dan Marino. I don't want to see shit. But anyway, like I said, Michael Sicky, he's going to be a good player for us. This was my one, my second favorite pick on the thing. I, I love this pick right here. Um, you know, Adam Gates' offense ran best when he had a great tight end. Uh, when Peyton Man he also had Peyton Manning that season. But it ran best when he got a great tight end. So I'm happy that we have a, another great great tight end, all right? He's not great yet, but I think he could be great. If he learn how to f block. Then we get Jerome Baker. And the Jerome Baker is going to be good for what he is being bought in to do, okay? Now, people seem to like... like I don't think he's the next Ray Lewis, Zach Thomas... You know, I, like Brian Erlacher type linebacker. No, I don't think that. But I think for what he's doing, what he's going to be asked to do is going to be great. And I think that the, what we should hope he is is probably Deion Jones. That's probably who I would want him to be at his ceiling, at his best. I hope he would become a Deion Jones. With that being said, I don't think he's like a Ray Lewis. I don't think he's going to be the guy that's going to be the main guy on our on our linebacker unit. He wasn't even the captain in college. Rayquan McMillan was a captain in college, and that's who I think is going to be the main guy anchoring that defense. I don't think it's going to be Jerome Baker. I think he's going to play his role, though, well and effectively. And um, I see him starting. So that was a great pickup as well. I think he's going to be he's going to be great in coverage. He's fast. Like this is an awesome pickup too. But and, and people get offended because I don't say because I don't say like oh yeah I love this pick. Oh my god, this is the greatest pick ever. Oh my god, next Ray Lewis. People get offended, call me a negative fan. I'm just saying how I feel. Okay, I'm just saying how I, how I see. Okay, he's gonna be a great player, but he's not Roquan Smith level. Okay, which hence the fact that Roquan Smith was picked in the first round, he was picked in the third. I right? just makes sense. 
Now, get to the second fourth round pick, and we got, I still don't know how to say his name. It's either Baelish or Bali. Uh, yeah, if y'all haven't noticed, I accidentally skipped Durham Smythe, okay? But I'm gonna get back to him at the end of the video. So just keep watching, you know? Yeah, I just noticed this, but, uh, yeah, I have no explanation. And, um, yeah, continue the video. Kalen Ballers. Now, this guy's gonna be good. I don't think he's gonna get much play time this year, but I, I like this pick because we did need another running back. And, and also, that's the pick that we got rid of Ajayi for. So it makes sense to get another running back. With that being said, the reason I say he's not gonna play is not because he's not good, it's just because he has two running backs above him. You know, he has Frank Gore and Ken Drake above him. Who's gonna sacrifice carries? We didn't sign Frank Gore for no f reason. All right, so this guy is probably the running back for the future. If you look at when the Dolphins drafted Ken Drake, he only got about four or three, three carries a game. It's just not because Ken Drake wasn't good, it's because he was a rookie and he had people above him, Damian Williams and, and Jay Ajayi. If you look at when Jay Ajayi was trade, was, was drafted, he only got four or five carries a game. Why? Because we had Lamar Miller above him, not because Jay Ajayi wasn't good. If you look at when Lamar Miller was drafted, he only got four or five carries a game. Why? Because we had Reggie Bush. Not that Lamar Miller wasn't good, but we had Reggie Bush. Okay, I feel like I had to really give y'all the details on that or why I said it because some people like to flip up my words in the comment section. So I just made sure I made it fucking absolutely abundantly clear. Then look at Cornell Armstrong. I think he's just a body. I think he's a body. I have to see him get, uh, see what he actually is capable of. I did read that he compared himself to Brent Grimes. He, he wants to be like Brent Grimes. He likes Brent Grimes. He looks up to him as a small corner like him. That's what I like. I like Optimus Grimes. He was one of my favorite cornerbacks with the Miami Dolphins. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like that. You know what I'm saying? But really, he's just going to be a body. I think the first year. I don't think he's going to be taking nobody's spot. Let me be honest with you. Then you look at Quentin Poling, uh, who's also a good linebacker. We'll see what he can do. I think he's going to be a special team. We'll see what he can do if he can break it to the into the starting lineup. It's not much on him really to where I could really, you know, analyze him. I analyze him a little bit, but you know, he looks pretty good. So we'll see exactly what he brings to the table. If anything, he's gonna be some great competition among some linebackers. And if he's able to leapfrog, you know, one of those starting linebackers, then I know he's good. So it'll be that. And then we got a kicker, and I'm not even gonna judge a kicker because I don't fucking know. All right, you don't know. I remember the Buccaneers drafted the kicker in like the second, third round or some shit like that, and he was end up being trash. So you don't ever know what these kickers gonna do when they get out of college. It's just mental, and they, and they just fuck up, you know. But this guy, he has a big leg, from what I'm, uh, what I heard, his accuracy is questionable. So we'll just see what he does when he gets into the NFL. I'm not gonna sit there and say he trash kicker like I know a good kicker, cause I don't. But anyway, so what I would give these drafts, um. I will give it a B, okay? I give it a B, and the reason I'm giving it a B, I'll tell you in a second, but this is a higher grade than I would usually give a fucking Dolphins school. Last year, I would've gave us a fucking D minus, cause goddamn Charles Harris in the first round when we already had all them ends, it made no fucking sense. And then the fact that we still got a whole bunch of ends over Charles Harris, when is Charles Harris gonna get his opportunity? I don't know. But anyway, I'll give us a B, and this is the one thing that I would say that the Dolphins should've did, okay? But they know more than I do. Keep that in mind, because they with them every day. I would have drafted the defensive tackle. Now, if they trust Jordan Phillips and, and, and De Devon or, or whoever they got at defensive tackle right now, if they trust them, you know what I'm saying, Vincent Taylor, if they trust them that much, fine. You know, I'm uh, going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they know more than I do, even though they haven't proved to me in their lifetime that they know more than I do because they f do dumb shit. But I'm just going to assume they know more than I do and that these young defensive tackles are the future. And also, something we don't know is we don't exactly know the Dominican Sue's value. We know he's a good player, but if you really think about it, the one way you can tell somebody's value to a team is when they're gone. Like, like even in life, you don't know what you got until it's gone. You know what I'm saying? So, when Ryan Tannehill got hurt, for example, we understood what we got. Y'all see what, what the f happened at quarterback, and we, we got an appreciation for him, okay? I at least got an appreciation for him. He's not my favorite quarterback, but I got an appreciation for him, okay? When Rashad Jones got hurt, you seen what happened. You got appreciation. I've been in the Rashad Jones was a beast, but you y'all you, see what I'm saying? When J.J. missed a game, or whatever the case may be. When a player gets hurt, you really learn like how much they meant to the team. Ndamukong Katsu, fortunately, never got hurt. Okay, he was uh, he was only a majority of steps. So we don't know exactly what his what the team would have been without him. We have no blueprint what the team would have been without him. So who knows how those defensive tackles are? And they might be good. And and judging by the fact that we didn't draft a defensive tackle, they better f be. And quarterback now quarterback situation backup quarterback situation uh we probably can just get one next year in the draft if it's that serious obviously we're gonna go with brock oswald this year as a backup quarterback hopefully they neither one of they just, hopefully they just never touch the field and ryan Tannehill stays healthy and if y'all actually read the reports not dolphins never even planned on getting a quarterback up allegedly they they that was all a smoke screen 
Even Baker Mayfield, all that shit was a smoke screen. They never even wanted a quarterback. Because if they did, they could have got one in the second, the fourth. They never wanted a quarterback the whole time. So everybody was tricked. So that's why I don't understand when people in my comments act like they know everything, calling me a dumb ass, blah, 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 blah. I know everything. Guess what? You all got tricked, motherfucker. We never wanted a quarterback. Okay, I was tricked, but y'all was tricked too. But so all you motherfuckers that was in the comments, oh my God, I know everything. Dolphins are going to get after Baker, blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. But anyways, like I said, I get this a B. Let me know what you guys think about this drive. Was this a W or A? I think it was a W. I think this was one of the best drives we had in years. But obviously, we don't know until they actually get on the field and produce, okay? And that, that's just how we would know. My least favorite pick of this one was Smythe, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. Smythe is not my favorite person in the world. I know people like people are saying, oh, he has hands and whatnot. But guess what, guys? He had 20-something catches his whole college career. You don't know know if he has hands or not okay he was mostly used as a blocking tight end so that's why i'm assuming he is a fucking blocking tight end now y'all want to say his hands is underrated where did you see that huh did y'all work out with the motherfucker? how do y'all know his hands are underrated oh his hands are he, oh he can, no, he can catch and even if he can't catch he should be able to catch he's a fucking nfl tight end now he should be able to catch here's the main thing can you get open he ran a 4-8 when they asked him what he need to work on, he said, my route running. So can he get open? Did y'all ever think about that? Because it was a smart ass comment in my shit. Because I, I called him a blocking tight end. They was like, oh, you need to shut up. Oh, he can, he can catch. Can he get open? Can he route run? So that's like my least favorite. Cause, cause, and it's not even because he won't be useful. And people say he's Anthony Fasano. Anthony Fasano had a thousand receiving yards coming out of college. Anthony Fasano had better combine numbers on almost everything. So don't don't compare him to Anthony Fasano yet, okay? He could be Anthony Fasano. He's not Anthony Fasano coming out of college. Relax, okay, on that, okay? Now, anyways, that was my least favorite pick because I feel like maybe we could have got him in the fifth. And then instead of getting him, we should have got a defensive tackle. But like I said, they might know more than I do. And maybe our young defensive tackles are amazing, okay? So if it's one thing I could change, I would have got Mo Hurst instead of fucking. Uh, Smythe, okay? With that being said, I, I would've got Smythe later. Or I would've got another blocking tight end later. With that being said, that's just my opinion. Attack me in the comments all you want to. I don't go uh, I'm going to sleep. Right. <laughs> Anyways, get a comment, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to respond to comments when I get home. But, okay, flexing, I'm out. I remember I wanted for the crystal many times. But I knew this moment to come. Now it's my time. I got to make a fall. Them nights that my mama cried. I'm going in. I'm putting...